All right, let's begin the program here. Please find your seats. I am not just the person who's going to remind you when to find your seats. My name is Arthur Chien. Uh, thank you for the beautiful picture up there. That's the nicest one I've got. I don't know how they found it, but Google is a likely candidate there. Uh, candidate there. It is my honor uh, to welcome you to China Institute's 2018 Blue Cloud Gala. Thank you for having me here. I am proud to kick off what is going to be a really special event tonight. Number two to this event tonight, just so that you know, is Amazon moving to Long Island City. So that's what you've got to look forward to. Now, while we will soon be treated to many perspectives on the value this organization brings, it only tells a part of the story. And as journalists, it's our job to find out and to bring to our audience the entire story. But don't worry, I'm not here to teach. We are here to talk about why increasing knowledge and understanding is a very important thing. China Institute is building up and building out in order to bring that knowledge and that understanding out there. This year, the Institute has finalized plans to complete its second floor space that will bring a large open auditorium, new classrooms, and a performance arts center that will bring all kinds of things to the table. Downstairs, the Institute has raised funds towards opening the ground floor entrance, combining arts, culture, fashion, and an event space to welcome visitors and community members alike. The next several years will be a time of great change and growth, as it should be, and it is remarkable to consider the achievements they have accumulated and the future path that they have embarked on. For more than 90 years, the Institute has worked to equip the public with knowledge about China through programs in education, art, culture, and in business. All of you are here tonight because you understand the importance of this. I also want to thank all, your, all of you for your support and for your time in being here tonight. It is very important to all of us, and we appreciate it. And a special thank you to the people that we will, we will hear from, both uh, the Bard College Conservatory, the U.S. China Music Institute, and not only will we be hearing from them, but we will be given a treat of a performance by ballroom champions Victor Fung and Anastasia Murayova. It is my pleasure now to introduce China Institute's President, James Heimowitz. Thank you, Arthur. Hi, everybody. I'm James Heimowitz. I'm the President of China Institute. A big welcome to all of you. Thank you so much for coming this evening. 各位朋友,晚上好。看到这么多来支持华美习近世的分子,我就很高兴了。So thank you, everybody. I won't torture you with my poor Chinese, but it's truly, a, it's truly an honor to, to be here tonight. Um, this is tough times. This is really a hard time to be an organization that's promoting understanding, even if it's like China Institute, through culture, through art, through education, through business practices. Um, this is really a tough time. And this is a time when we really need to come to grips with that. We need to understand that we have a shared future, that we share this planet, and probably the two most important countries sharing this planet at this time are China and the United States. And no matter how we think about it, we need to equip Americans to have a deeper, more nuanced understanding of China. And we try to do this through our school, through our gallery, through our center for business, through our programs. And tonight we're here to celebrate four extraordinary individuals who have come and championed the things that China Institute does and brings to life and stands for in a really powerful way. You'll be hearing more about these wonderful honorees as the evening passes, but I just wanted to personally take the time to say a big thank you and a big congratulations to Dame Jillian Sackler. <laughs> to Howard Milstein. to John Long, and to Liu Dan, who couldn't be with here, here with us tonight, which is really a shame. We had a little dinner celebrating his contributions, but you'll get to see some of his work in a time. So um, I also want to, this evening, thank all of my fantastic trustees. So be prepared to stand up, because everything, you know, this is not a tough, not an easy time for them either. And this is really a time where I'm so delighted to feel their strength to feel their energy and their spirit. So I'd like to first ask my co-chairs, Didi Pei and An Le Chung, and 
Sorry, Didi Pei is my co-chair. Yusai Khan, my co-chair. Where's my angel co-chair? Yusai. Anla, our vice chair. David O'Brien, our treasurer. Ingrid Ehrenberg, our secretary. James Chin, John Foster, Michael Krupa, Bob Niederlander, Sophia Shung, Peter Walker, Yvonne Wong, Cheng Guoqing, all here tonight. Raise the lights, everybody, and say a big, big thank you. As I said, we couldn't be what we're doing without their great support and with the support of everybody in this room. And I don't want to stand between you and your meal, so let me hand it over to my co-chair, Didi Pei, for the next part. Thank you, James. <laughs> and um, I just want to give a special um, thanks to Yusai Khan, who I think you will be seeing more of later on. But first of all, first of all, I would like to begin by posing a question. What does it mean to build? As an architect, I may have some answers. Beyond bricks and mortar, building anything takes commitment and the desire to bring people together around a shared result and a shared vision. China Institute's foundation was poured in the 1920s when a few dedicated leaders came together to form a place where engagement with China, US education, culture, and, and business could be made available to the public. After 92 years, <coughs> that, that solid, solid foundation now supports an institution that has opened its doors and broadened its vision to truly encompass all that defines China today. But the construction process is never truly finished because we are always looking to do more. And this is what tonight is really all about. It is an opportunity to highlight, to highlight what we have done and set our collective sights on what we will, we will build moving forward. The people we honor tonight are builders as well of companies and causes and connections and camaraderie. John S. Long, Liu Dan, Liu Dan Howard F. F. Milstein, and Dame Gillian Sackler are extraordinary individuals whose far-reaching accomplishments span business, art, philanthropy, banking, and foreign policy. They also embody the mission and the chi, or energy, of China Institute to provide access, context, and knowledge about China and strengthen understanding between two of the world's richest cultures. Thank you. And now, I would like to welcome my fellow trustee and vice chair of China Institute, An La Cheng, to the podium. Good evening, everyone. <clears throat> I have the difficult task of uh, introducing the first honoree, <laughs> but actually, it's not difficult at all, because John Long is, a, is an extraordinary individual that all of you should know a lot about. So I'm thrilled and honored to be able to have this uh, opportunity. And let me start by, uh, I think we have a slideshow. So um, are we able to start the sl slideshow? And earlier on, James said that these are extraordinary honorees. And Didi said that these are builders. And definitely, those adjectives apply to John. So good evening. I am very pleased to introduce our first recipient of the Blue Cloud Award this evening and my very good friend, John S. Long. John is the founder and CEO of High Ridge Partners, a global real estate company, and alongside his beautiful wife, Marilyn, the founder of the Long Family Foundation. John was born in the village of Toisan in Guangzhou, China, and immigrated to the United States at the age of seven. He grew up in South, South Central Los Angeles 
and went on to earn his BA from UCLA and his MBA from Harvard Business School. Now the story gets more interesting now. Let's get to the second photo. He started his career in real estate at international home builder Kaufman and Broad, becoming the youngest vice president at the company. During his time at KB Homes, where this photo was taken, John set records for profitability, as well as production, creating a construction process that delivered finished homes 40 days from groundbreaking. I mean, that, that's pretty unbelievable. Okay, photo three, in 1978, John embarked on a new path and founded his own company, High Ridge Partners, a global real estate firm that has developed, owned, and managed an investment portfolio of more than $10 billion across nearly all property types. And among these investments, John formed Western Pacific Housing, a private company that grew to be the sixth largest home builder in California. So as you see, he moved up pretty quickly in California. And during this decade, John has turned his attention to other real estate ventures, forming two operating companies. High Ridge Prove Provender has developed over 4.5 million square feet of refrigerated food-related distribution facilities. And then High Ridge Costa is an afford affordability housing provider which owns and operates over 20,000 units across the U.S. High Ridge Costa, across the U.S. High Ridge Costa also gave John an opportunity to bridge his expertise in real estate with his passion for social responsibility. As he grew older, he became more philanthropic and felt the responsibility to be more socially, uh, uh, how shall I say, to give back to the community. In 1992, John and Marilyn established the Long Family Foundation, which is a private foundation that supports religious, educational, cultural, and research endeavors. A hallmark of this foundation, philanthropy, philosophy mirrors John's business philosophy to identify areas of unexplored opportunity and then invest to help social partners grow and scale to maturity. An early example of John's expertise and passion blending is the UCLA. Here he's standing in front of UCLA plaque this which created the real estate center which John founded in 2000. In less than two decades the center has become the preeminent resource for real estate research for an industry that is ever evolving. Um, if possible, may I get your attention, please? I just have maybe three more paragraphs, so I just want I, I to show respect to John because he really is deserving of this attention. So in 2010, thank you, John's focus shifted in China and the U.S. UC Irvine, John S. and Maryland Long Institute for U.S.-China Business, Law and Society, which was endowed by the Long Family Foundation. A first-of-its-kind campus-wide center for UC Irvine, the Long Institute is anchored by seven core faculty, numerous affiliated professors and visiting faculty from a number of Chinese universities and hosts bilateral exchange on the topic of economic growth, social development, risk, and regulation. And this is where John's personal interest in China really begins to blossom. Subsequently, in 2014, John's interest in China and commitment to philanthropy had him to establish GCPI, or Global Chinese Philanthropy Initiative, and in 2017, a bilateral report on giving trends among both Chinese American and mainland Chinese philanthropists was published. Together with Chinese and Chinese American philanthropists and academics from the school like Harvard, UCLA, Tsinghua and philanthropy uh, and academic firm from schools like Harvard, UCLA, Tsinghua, and Fudan, GCPI hosted events to disseminate and discuss the findings of the report and elevate the profile of Chinese giving and build a stronger network of philanthropists. GCPI has garnered media attention from various uh, well-known uh, media companies such as FT, Chronicle of Philanthropy, CCTV, South China Morning Post. And here, this photo is uh, a philanthropy panel where John attended a part of SubChina, among numerous other media outlets. In addition to their support of higher education, John and Marilyn are lifelong supporter of the arts, most notably the Long 
Family Foundation has a commitment to public sculpture, installing over 10 pieces across California, from universities to gardens to libraries. The sculptures range in location, material, artist, and size. So this uh, ends the formal part, and I just have a minute more to say about how I'm thrilled and honored to uh, introduce John Long, who is uh, a family friend. A number of words come up to me when I describe John, but the first one is, most of all, action. This is a man of action. When he, uh, he, he has a mission, he has a purpose. When he does something, he gets it done. So that's number one. Number two, this is a man who's very, very humble, and, and he lives below the radar. He would rather give credit to other people and never really take credit for all the things he's done. And an incredible, uh, generous individual. He's very loyal, that's the third thing that I would say, he's to his family, friends, and his community. And most of all, he's very, very creative. As you see, he's moved on from working at a small real estate company to building his own company and building a whole community that connects China and the US. And finally, I have to say what really stands out uh, uh, with John is his love, his love for his family, friends, and community. And I am thrilled because his personal passion and mission really is fully aligned with China Institute's mission and mine to advance US-China relations. So it is most befitting that we honor John tonight. And uh, John, please come to the stage. We are thrilled to be able to give you the blue cloud while I will Wow, <laughs> I was not expecting that. But thank you so much, Anna, for your kind words and generous introduction and for your friendship, most of all. Because I think, like Anna said, it's the friendships that we have developed that really make this so unique and so important, those of us in this room. So, thank you. And thank you, China Institute, for presenting me with this award, which really was not expected, and I graciously accept it. Uh, and I really appreciate all your support as well. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, family and friends. I'm truly humbled and honored to be here with you tonight to receive this award. But upon reflection, I really believe that I'm accepting this award on behalf of the generations before me, for it was by the grace of God that they paved the way for me to be here. When Marilyn and I started our foundation in 1992, we wanted our foundation to represent the values that our ancestors passed down to us and to reflect those that we want to pass down to our children and grandchildren. We have strived to bring those values to all of the efforts that we support, particularly to our US-China bridge building initiatives. 15 years ago, I could not have imagined myself being connected to US-China relations, much less being here in front of you tonight. I very much considered myself an American, and that being Chinese was biological, not cultural or historical. Allow me to explain this in a little more detail. I was born, as Anla said, in Guangzhou, however, I can also consider myself to be a fourth generation American. My great grandfather represented our family's first generation. He came from China in the 1850s to help build railroads in California. My grandfather was an herbalist 
in Los Angeles Chinatown. My father and his brothers were small grocery store operators in Southern California. Due to the Chinese Exclusion Act of 1882 and extreme discrimination, my ancestors had no rights to own any properties in America, so that any money they saved went back to China, which is where I was born. There I lived a comfortable life with my mother until I was six, when we abruptly had to escape in 1953 as communism reached our village. We fled by boat to Hong Kong until my father could process our paperwork to come to the United States. So in many ways, my life as an American started when I was seven years old, the age when I also saw my father for the very first time. I was a transplant from a totally different culture with no English language skills. My main goal was to fit into the fabric of this new foreign society and pursue the American dream. So I set aside my Chinese roots in order to assimilate to the American culture and system. It wasn't until late in my life that I became passionate, as Anna said, about reconnecting the dots to my Chinese heritage in the context of being an American. The complex relationship between the US and China today makes this priority even more important to me. It was this impetus that led Marilyn and I in 2010 to establish the long US-China Institute at the University of California in Irvine. The long institute offers research and programs that promote bilateral understanding between these two global powers in economics, law, and society. We're also now witnessing the emergence of a brand new phenomenon, China's rising global influence, expanding economic success, and sudden wealth creation. In fact, wealth in China has been created so rapidly that today, there are more billionaires in China than there are in the United States. And this all happened in the last 20 years. Remarkable. So in response to this dramatic transformation, we undertook in 2014 a multidiscipline research project, as, men as Anla mentioned, the Global Chinese Philanthropy Initiative, of which Anla has also participated so generously also known as GCPI. This study examined the giving trends, motivations, contributions, and impact of Chinese and Chinese Americans by networking forums where ideas can be shared, where areas of common interest can be identified, and where research can be applied. We hope to expand the Chinese philanthropy landscape in both size and impact. And so many of you here have been contributors to this enormous and incredible journey. So for that, I think we're all very, very grateful. I've also long admired China's Institute and ongoing work to build positive US-China relations. I'm also grateful for China Institute's support of GCPI over the past years. So tonight, the Long Family Foundation and the China Institute are proud to announce a new program that will build on GCPI and China Institute's partnership, the US-China Next Generation Philanthropy Initiative. Young philanthropists in both countries today are hungry for trusted relationships 
meaningful exchanges and important collaboration with their international counterparts. Through two main platforms, the Young Leaders Council and the Philanthropy Dialogues, these programs will provide opportunities for emerging Chinese and American philanthropists to work together and seek solutions for today's most pressing challenges. Anla, Didi, and James, we look forward to working with you to build this important and exciting program at the China Institute. So I'm honored to accept this special award on behalf of myself and my beautiful and lovely wife, Marilyn, who is here. And we've been together for over 40 years, so my voice is cracking a little bit. But <laughs> thank you very much, and God bless you all. Thank you so much, John. I think that connection between being an American and also being in touch with your roots is something that all of us uh, can feel. And if you have any bandwidth to your action and construction, maybe we can use you for the Second Avenue subway completion in New York, or maybe the BQE. We've got a few things that could keep you busy. Next, we are delighted to introduce Andrea Ceseverino Galan, who is the Senior Vice President, President and Chief Development Officer at China Institute, and Robert Martin, the Director of the Bard College Conservatory. Hi. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, Arthur. For over 5,000 years, music has been essential to Chinese culture in that its language is tonal, its poems were once sung, and an educated person in the traditional sense was an expert on music. Today, we are thrilled to announce our new initiative, Music at China Institute, Hua Mei Yin Yue, a collaboration with the Bard College Conservatory of Music and its U.S. China Music Institute to bring the teaching and learning of Chinese traditional music, its beauty, wisdom, and philosophy to people of all ages and backgrounds in the heart of New York City at China Institute. Together with calligraphy, brush painting, and Chinese Go classes at our award-winning School of Chinese Studies, we offer an education of all four timeless cultural traditions of China, Qin, Qi, Shu, and Hua, the finest art forms China has offered to cultivate one's mind and soul. And we are truly honored and excited to have talented musicians and educators from Bard College Conservatory and the Central Conservatory of Music in Beijing together with us on this wonderful journey. Thank you. <clears throat> this new collaboration, Music at the China Institute, is an exciting development for the Bard College Conservatory of Music and its U.S.-China Music Institute. The mission of our institute is to promote the study, performance, and appreciation of music from contemporary China and to support musical exchange between the United States and China. In its first year, our institute has signed a five-year partnership with the Central Conservatory of Music in Beijing with four key elements. The first is that Chinese instrument majors are in the Bard Conservatory's undergraduate program. The second, annual conferences. The third, a summer academy for high school age students. And the fourth, the annual China Now Music Festival. Actually, in the coming year, next year, the China Now Music Festival will include a newly commissioned oratorio by the composer Zhou Long, uh, expressing the experience of the Chinese railroad workers and the completion of the U.S. Transcontinental Railroad 150 years ago to be performed here in New York and at Stanford University and elsewhere. 
So today we're excited to add with our China Institute colleagues a program of music lessons, classes, and events for people of all ages who will come to love the distinctive sounds and rich cultural heritage of the traditional instruments of China. This is a project central to the missions of both of our institutions, and we are thrilled to be part of it. And we're especially happy to have you here, a group of our students, this evening. Thank you very much. Thank you, Andrea and Robert. And congratulations to both China Institute and BART for this really exciting partnership. Next up, please turn your attention to the stage over there. They're already ready uh, for a performance by these new exciting partners and longtime leaders in music and education. Take it away.
Can I get, I'm just to, that was so amazing. Thank you so much. Can we give these ladies another hand in, and the first group included? Thank you. What an amazing job you've done. Now, we're gonna, dinner is being served right now, and we want you, Sai, to be able to speak to you when everybody can be silent. So enjoy your dinner, and we're gonna be back in a couple of minutes, okay? All right, who's ready for the next part of the program? All right, how's your dinner? How's your dinner? We've got some fun times coming up. Thank you very much to the excited gentleman on my right. There is time right now for us to recognize some people who have shown up for the 92nd birthday of China Institute uh, that we're very grateful for having here, including Jean Shararoff over here. Hello, Jean. Uh, including probably China's most famous jewelry designer of contemporary jewelry, that's Anna Hu. If you, oh, if you guys would stand up and actually stay standing, let's do that. Just be recognized. Jean, please stay standing. We have an amazing actress in the house, and Han Du. If Han Du would stand up, please. Please stand up. Dr. Ruth Westheimer, if you will. A lot of us have learned from the doctor. And of course, an iconic uh, designer, Mary McFadden, please, if you would stand. Thank you all so much for being part of this evening and the 92nd birthday for China Institute. Uh, and thank those guys for the lovely performance before. Now, the, the phrase is often used for the person in my position of the next person needs no introduction. And in this case, that might actually be the person that the phrase was invented for. Yusai Khan is a global beauty and culture icon a successful entrepreneur, cultural ambassador, and one of the most recognized women in China. And you don't have, I know I work for Fox, so my word here is, <laughs> right? Thank you, I, it was uncomfortable. But you don't have to take my word from it. People Magazine called Yusai the most famous woman in China. Time Magazine proclaimed her the queen of Middle Kingdom. And here at the China Institute, we proudly call Yusai Khan a terrific trustee, was the word that came up. Angel co-chair, <laughs> angel co-chair, terrific trustee was in here. Our marvelous board co-chair. And just for tonight, your next speaker who will present the award to Dame Jillian Sackler. Hi. Um, before I say a single word, I would like you to first take a look at a video of Dame Sackler. Dame Julia Sackler has devoted her life to building bridges between the East and the West, connecting people around the world through culture and art. It's a mission initiated by her late husband, Dr. Arthur Sackler, a mission that Jillian grew into a global institution with cultural diplomacy that have transformed sectors of the arts, sciences, and humanities. One such transformation, the Smithsonian Institution. In the 1980s, Arthur Sackler had accumulated a wonderful, fantastic collection of Asian they want to give that collection to the United States of America, to the people of this country. And Jill Sackler was his partner in that. And she's the one who, over the last three decades, has made that promise and that vision come true. In 1987, the Arthur S. Sackler Gallery at the Smithsonian Institution opened its doors. It showcases 1,000 masterpieces hand selected from the Sacklers' personal collection. Sadly, Arthur died before its debut. Jillian founding patron. From donating art to protecting it, the Sacklers have simultaneously set their sights on Beijing. During the 1980s, culture and preservation of art and antiquity were not a Chinese government priority. To remedy this, the Sacklers established China's first institution designed to teach curatorial standards and educate museum staff. They broke ground in 1986, but after Arthur's passing in 1987, mounting political turmoil in China, many discouraged Jillian from continuing. However, she persevered. In 1993, Jillian opened the Arthur S. Sackler Museum of Art and Archaeology at Pekin University, a first of its kind in China, employing temperature, humidity control, advanced lighting, and proper storage. As founding patron and honorary director, she returns year after year, sponsoring scholarship programs, symposiums on cultural diplomacy, calligraphy contests, and contemporary exhibitions. Since the 
You would think that I have no more to say about her after this video. <laughs> I do have something to say. My relationship with Dame Sackler dates back almost 45 years, when she first came to New York from the UK. Thus, I have known her longer than any of you have known her in this room. <laughs> it's true, right? Am I not true, right? Okay. Um, you know, I met her, actually, through her late husband, Dr. Sackler, in, in the 70s. Now, everybody knows who Dr. Sackler was, right? He was a doctor who was nominated for the Nobel Prize. He was a scientist, a businessman, a great collector, and an immense collection, with an immense collection of Chinese art, a philanthropist, a visionary before his time. I worked briefly for Dr. Sackler's newspaper, The Medical Tribune. One day, I was asked to go to his office to talk about doing a medical TV program. I was so flattered, I was so young then, I was so flattered that the great author Sackler thought that I would be good enough for television. Later on, as you know, I did go into television totally inspired by Dr. Sackler. I owe, I owe him one big time. After Dr. Sackler passed away, Jill spent a few years finishing building the Arthur Sackler Museum of Art and Archaeology at Peking University. Then she got involved with, are you ready? Tufts University, the Metropolitan Museum, the New York City Ballet, Rockefeller University, Harvard University, National Academy of Sciences. <sighs> today, <laughs> yeah, today, today she is a trustee of the Royal Academy of Arts in London, a trustee of American Film Institute, a member of President's Circle of the National Academy of Sciences, and the chairman of Foreign Policy Association, and Gillian Sackler became a dame in 2005, bestowed by Queen Elizabeth for her philanthropy work. <laughs> Honestly, I thought I knew Dame Sackler until I read her latest bio. I realized I had no idea how much she had done in these intervening years. She is like a flower, so beautifully blossoming in front of all of us. I am sure that Dr. Sackler would have been really proud of you. Now I would like to invite Noel, come on, Latif, 
to say a few words about an institution that is so important in China, and it is already celebrating its 25th anniversary. So I would, and he's the only one, not only one, he's one of the few I didn't go for the 25th anniversary. Maybe you can explain a few words to us and tell me, tell us how you feel about that institution. Good evening. Robert Kennedy famously said, there are those who see things as they are and ask why. I dream of things that never were and ask why not. Dame Gillian Sackler is one of those rare visionaries who dreams of things that never were and asks why not. Situated near the old summer palace at the west gate of Peking University is the Arthur M. Sackler Museum of Art and Archaeology, the first teaching museum in China, and an institution that, owns, that owes its existence and continuing vitality to Dame Gillian Sackler. On a scale that is breathtaking, Jill engages with the many Sackler museums around the world including in this country, the Arthur M. Sackler Gallery at the Smithsonian Institution and the Sackler Museum at Harvard University. Jill is truly a consummate practitioner of cultural diplomacy. She is the first woman to serve as the chairman of the Foreign Policy Association. She presided with Brio over the celebration of the association's 100th anniversary this year. Under her chairmanship, the Foreign Policy Association has made unprecedented forays into the fertile intersection of culture and international relations. Her investment in young future leaders at the Foreign Policy Association, the Dame Gillian Sackler Fellows, is just another example of her vision an extraordinary legacy, which of course are two sides of the same coin. At this critical juncture in relations between the United States and China, I salute Dame Gillian Sackler for her invaluable and forward-looking contributions to global understanding and friendship. Thank you. Um. I guess an extremely important part I would like to uh, mention now is that Dame Sackler also supports China Institute in many ways, especially our gallery. So may I please ask you to come up for me to give you your award, please? Is she beautiful or not tonight? Look, I'm serious. Look at her, look at her. We love the dress. We love the dress. <laughs> <laughs> they love the dress. Okay, you, do you want to know what, who designed her dress? Anybody? This is dress is a Guope dress. It's the a great Chinese designer, top, top designer in China. And look at her. Mm. 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 <laughs> I'm going to give you your award first before you. Oh, award. Award. This is your this award. This is my award. Thank yes. you. It's beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> Can I put this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure, sure. This uh, is yours. Thank you very much, Yusai. Thank you, No. That was a surprise. Um, Yusai, wow. That was an incredible introduction. Um, I actually have known someone in this room longer. Oh. In my brother. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, <laughs> but. <laughs> But you probably are the person that I've known longest in, in New York. Um, <laughs> um, we first met uh, in the early 1970s, maybe 1971. Uh, I think we met Arthur around about the same time. I'm always very, very happy when, Arthur, uh, when someone knows Arthur because I really can't convey what 
he was like. But um, Alice, uh, my friend, is also here, and she also knew him. But um, anyway, I met um, Yusai early in the 1970s, and um, Arthur was a great fan of hers, and he was um, thinking of uh, starting a TV health channel, and he thought that Yusai would be excellent on television. And of course, he was right. You've become a big, big star. So, um, China Institute is very lucky to have you as chairman. And actually, and actually, I think that China and the US is very lucky to have you for the relationship because you're a very extraordinary person. So. And I would also like to thank uh, uh, Chairman Didi Pei. And uh, you know, uh, we did, back in the 80s, we did ask uh, his father, I am, to do the uh, Sackler Museum in Beijing. But uh, he had just done the Fragrant Hills Hotel, and he declined. But he, he recommended um, his protege, a young Chinese-American, Lo Yi Chan. And uh, the uh, museum progressed very, very slowly. And then Arthur died, and then uh, Tiananmen Square happened. And a lot of people here, including governmental, um, advised me not to go ahead, that it wasn't the time to go ahead. But I thought that it was um, a cultural, educational project which would bring people together, which was what we were trying to do. So um, it went ahead, and uh, it uh, opened in 1993. Um, so I would like to also thank uh, President James Heimowitz um, and also Gallery Director Willow Hay. Um, I have known Willow uh, a long time too, not as long, uh, but um, she has the best contacts in China and she gets the most remarkable loan exhibitions, uh, which no one else can get. And in 1996, she got a loan exhibition um, of Chinese calligraphy from my contest, which I started in 1990. Uh, to um, continue this uh, most noble traditional skill, which was not that fashionable in China at the time. And um, actually, Willow, I found a very nice photograph of us with, at that exhibition, which a lot of, with a lot of uh, children around us. And I gave it to the video people and uh, they didn't use it. But actually, the video people went out <laughs> to uh, uh, all these places and they found this footage, which I never saw before, actually. So uh, anyway, I want to thank them for that. And I want to thank all the people who said nice things, like Noel, Noel Latif, who is the um, he has been the president of the uh, Foreign Policy Association for nearly 25 years, and he has been phenomenally busy this year because it's been the centennial. So I want to thank him very much for being here and for, for what he said. And uh, I want to thank Richard Curin from the Sackler Gallery in DC, which is the um, National Museum of Asian Art. It's the twin to the National Museum of African Art. Actually, I should say the Arthur M. Sackler Gallery because there are problems with some Sacklers, but not Arthur, not me either. Uh, and um, I also want to thank uh, Miguel, Miguel Bernavides, who is the um, curator and um, 
uh, manager of the contemporary art programs at the Sackler Museum in China. And I'm so glad that uh, six of the 14 uh, artists who came to celebrate the 25th anniversary in May this year are here. And obviously, I'm very, very pleased that my other guests are here. They're right here. Um, but I can't mention everybody. Um, but, um, and I also want to thank Guo Pei, who made this dress particularly for me. Uh, <laughs> and um, she, <laughs> she uh, I know she has been um, honored by China Institute before. And uh, she said that um, she was inspired because I bring opposite cultures together, yin and yang. So um, anyway, education is the um, link between all the cultural in, uh, institutions and projects which I have been involved with for the last 40 years. And uh, I hope that it is bringing um, good relations across the world. And obviously, uh, I hope that it is bringing friendship and uh, cooperation between the US and China. And that is what China Institute is all about. It's a very important mission. So I want to thank China Institute, and I want to thank uh, Yusai, and I want to thank uh, I, and I want to um, say, uh, I want to acknowledge my fellow honorees. <laughs> so thank you very much. Look, it's always going to be a bit of a letdown after you, Cy, and Dame Sackler speak. Inevitably, inevitably. Whatever comes next cannot stand up to that. I'm so sorry. However, I have here in this box a 1982 Lafitte Rothschild. Hopefully that will make up for it a little bit. Are there any burgundy? Any burgundy lovers? Oh, this is going to be tough. Look at this. How about a dollar? Right. One dollar. Anybody two dollars for... Two dollars. Anybody three dollars? Three dollars. Anybody four dollars? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, fifteen, fifteen sixteen, twenty dollars. Twenty-five dollars. Fifty dollars. Seventy-five dollars. One hundred dollars. And he. A hundred and fifty dollars for the nineteen eighty-two Lafitte. Rothschild in this box. I'm going to ask all the photographers to sit down for a second. Every photographer off the floor, please. Sir, you know your burgundies. Nicely done. 200 right there. I was in Hong Kong on Saturday. And I opened an auction with an 82 Lafitte. And it sold for 80,000 Hong Kong dollars. And we're only at 300. Everything's in USD tonight, not RMB, not Hong Kong, all USD tonight. We're at 300 on this side, 
400 now. Anybody now at 500, 500, 600 will be next. 600, thank you, a new bidder. How about seven? Would you care for eight? Would you care for nine? Our next bid will be $1,000. 1,000, thank you. A dozen hundred right there. We're at one dozen, 14, thank you. 16, thank you. Or oh, we are getting close. 1,600. Madam, it's your bid at 1,800. 2,000, thank you. Gentlemen's bid on this side at $2,000 for the 1982 Lafitte Rothschild. Where are all, ah, 22, it's a palindrome, thank you, 22, sir, would you care for 24, you just wanted to bid it up, sir, the market in Hong Kong for Burgundy is very high. After our warm-up item, welcome back, you were missed, 24, 26. Sir, thank you. That is 28 right there. Nicely done. We're at $3,000 at table 15. We're now at 32.5 at table one. Well done. 82 is the best vintage in 50 years. Thank you very much. Ladies bet at $3,500. I didn't even want to take it out of the box because the box is nice. 37.5 will be next. Sir, thank you. 37.5. Would you make it four? 4,000 on this side. And if you have any wine in front of you, I encourage you to drink it now. Burgundy is like the Gatorade of charity auctions. Four thousand is next, madam. Would you care for one more bid, all for the China Institute? One more. I applaud you, sir. It's your bid now at four thousand dollars, all in USD, all in USD, madam. Forty-two five. On this side now. Gentlemen's bit over here. Would you care for 45? And the question was, is it a very good bottle? Yes. It's the best Lafitte Rothschild vintage in 50 years. This bottle, this bottle is from my personal seller and was purchased on release. So, because I speak much louder than Mr. Mr. Pei, this bottle is from his personal collection and was purchased on release. From Mr. Pei's personal collection. We are currently at 42.5. No, would you make it 45, sir? You will do it at 45, nicely done. Our next bid, our next bid will be $5,000 from the personal collection of Mr. Pay. Would you care for five? Would you care for five? Would you care for five? All through? We have 
And can we all agree that bidding wars are much better than trade wars? I'm going to have to work for the attention tonight. I like that. Sir, it is your bid. It is your bid. It's your bid at $4,500. Fair warning. Going once, going twice, and selling 40, I'm sorry, $5,000 at table 20. Sir, do you want to you look at it? Do you want to open it and take a look? One more? How about I'll cut you a discount at 52.5? I'm sure. 52.5 on this side. No, that's what I discount at 52.5. Yes, your bid. Your bid. Your bid at 52.5. Would you like 55? All through. As you said, going once. Going twice and selling to table 18 for 52.5. Congratulations. <laughs> oh, you are going to be a rambunctious Wednesday night audience. Two more things. Two more things to sell. Can I have that next slide up, please? So, the best Peking duck I have ever had was at the Rosewood Hotel in Beijing. But all the food blogs say the best version of the Imperial Mandarin delicacy that you can get in New York City is at Philippe Chow's Philippe, just down the street. This is a dinner for six. <laughs> a dinner for six with wine pairings. The opening bid is only $1,000. What, what do you mean? For? Madam, it's for charity. $1,000 is our, we're at 1,000. 12, five. Would you make it 15? 15. Would you make it 17, five? We're at 15. Is there any advance at $1,500? Next bid will be $17,500. And would all my auction spotters please move to the edges of the room? If you are an auction spotter, please go to the edge of the room. We're going to reconstruct this to make it as easy as possible. That's the edge of the dance floor. I need the edge of the room. Auction spotters to the edge of the room, please. We are at $1,500. Peking Duck, just two blocks away, at Philippe, with wine pairings. Is that a bid, sir, or are you just... Is he bidding? No? I saw hand above eyebrow level. We're at $1,500 on this side. At $1,500 on this side. Dinner for six. And can I have no iMag on me right now? Just, just this screen up, please. A new bidder in the most glorious dress here at $2,000. Thank you very much. I needed the assist right there. Would anybody like to bid $2,500? Can I get a little bit more sound? I need a little bit of help. There we go. That's helping out. I'm going to overpower you with my shortness. We all need attention, us only children. Oh, digital projection. We're at $2,000. We're at $2,000. Dinner for six. At Philippe, 
with the wine parents. I, I know. Going once, going twice. Dame, you are our winner, and please, I will clear my calendar and selling for 2000 Only one more auction item, and then I will let you be. This is an opportunity for a $5,000 gift card shopping spree at 10 Corso Como. The new slow fashion 28,000 square foot space at the South Street Seaport. Where 10 Corso Como plus a cocktail party for 50. Opening bid is $1,000 and I'm going to have the opening bid at $1,000 because I want that $5,000 gift card to go buy new suits. I'm going to sell $1,500, $2,000, anybody at $25. You are making money on this now, $2,500. Next bid will be $3,000. We're at $2,500. We're at $2,500. Is there any advance at $2,500? Cocktail party for 50. This location opened two and a half months ago. Remember, it's a $5,000 shopping spree. Next bit is 3,000. Thank you, 3,000. You sigh, they're not paying attention to me. I'm doing my best here. At 3,000. I'm going to steal a chair. At $3,000, I'm going to give you the microphone. Hey, hey. Wait, 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 wait. Hello, hello, hello. I would appreciate it if everybody sits down. This is the reason why we have tonight. We're doing an auction. We are trying to get some money to run China Institute. So I would really appreciate it if you could just, just sit down, please. I adore this man next to me. I think he's the best auctioneer I've ever seen and I go to a lot of charities, trust me. And he is just extraordinary. Just let him do his show, would you please? Give me a little respect for this wonderful auctioneer. He's auctioning an extraordinary gift given by a friend of mine who owns Howard Hughes. This is a I don't know if you guys know much about fashion, but Corso Como is the most important store from Milan. And they have given us, and they have just opened a store here in South Street Seaport. And this place is an amazing place because they combine art with fashion, with lifestyle, and with food. What he's trying to tell you is that we are going to give you $5,000 just to shop there. <laughs> just to shop there. $5,000 to shop there is pure money, okay? Plus a cocktail party for 50 people. You can have a cocktail party there for 50 people for two hours. They will close the store for you. Now, anybody who talks, I would assume that you are bidding $1,000, okay? <laughs> So I'm going to I am going to, uh, what, uh, so, uh, who is bidding? What's the last bidder? We're at 3,000 right here. With 3,000. Right okay. 4,000 right there. 45 right here. 5,000 back there. Teamwork makes the dream work. Yeah. 5,000 right there. 55 right here. Six right there. Who will do 65? Hey. hey, you know, a, a cocktail party for 50 people, that means they make the cocktail party. They give you the drinks. Okay, Michael, how much? 7,000? 7,000 with Michael. Who will do 75? Uh, Sophia, so 75. 75. Ha 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 
Yeah. Introduce it? Yes. Oh, video. Oh, oh. Uh, that is that's a that's a that's a that's a that's a that's a Casa Como. No, no. Wait a second. And, and now, we just we need a minute more of your time. We're gonna play sh very short video that reaffirms why we are all here tonight. No video. The video is me standing on a chair. So here's the thing. I do, I do, need, I do need your attention for one more moment. I was, the reason why I was in Hong Kong this last weekend is, look, I'm a charity auctioneer. I get to travel around the world and act the fool where burgundy suits raise money for great causes. And one of my clients is Teach for China, and they go out to rural China, and they put incredible teachers there. And a year ago, I spent Thanksgiving Day in Yunnan province uh, having lunch with school kids there. And, 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 here, and here's the thing that we forget in 2018. It, it's, it's not a zero-sum game. It's not one side's gonna lose and the other side's gonna win. The challenges that we face today, we have to work together. We have to come together. Because if we don't work together, we will all lose. And when I was over at the Ritz-Carlton on Saturday night in front of some of the wealthiest people in China, I said to them as a proud American, we need your young people to thrive for the future of the world, for the future of us all, for our shared future. And I say that because, look, I love my job as an auctioneer selling things. I don't have anything more to sell. I don't. But we need right now for the China Institute here in its 92nd year, in the year that I would argue is the most critical in its nearly century-long history, now more than ever, we need to come together. And the way we're going to do that The way that we are going to do that is not selling wine, not selling parties, not selling dinners. But we're going to raise $200,000 in the next five minutes for our shared future. If you can put up your paddle at the top level, at the $25,000 level, let's hit that $200,000 mark together because our future is together. Is there anybody at the 25, two, nine, six, thank you. That's one pledge right there. Thank you very much. One, three, two. That's two right there. Thank you very much. That's $50,000 raised. 250, thank you. That's $75,000 raised, ladies and gentlemen, for our shared future. Thank you. Is there one more pledge of $25,000 now to get us to $100,000, to halfway to our goal? I'll give you a second to finish whatever liquid you have on your table. It makes it easier, I promise. We're at $75,000. If you understand how important it is with these cultural initiatives, our shared future, I'll give you a second more. I'm now going to take it down to the $10,000 level. If you can hold up your paddle. No. 
Sir, you've been my rock all night. One more at table 18. Ladies and gentlemen, we've done $100,000 in the last three minutes. Thank you. Is there anybody else that would like to surprise me right now? Give you a second more. Let's now take it to the $10,000 level. If you can put up your 199, thank you. That's one right there. At the 10,000, two, four, five, thank you, sir. That's two right there. Who can make it three? Who can make it three right now? We've done $120,000 just in the last two minutes. At the $10,000 level, at the $10,000 level. Give you a second to think about it, a second to finish your one. At 10,000, at the $10,000 level. I'm now, oh, behind me? You sigh, thank you. That's another 10 right there. That's $130,000 raised. Can I have two more at 10,000? Can I have two more at 10,000? Make this investment because of the ROI, the return on this investment for that collaboration for 192 thank you that's 140 thousand dollars raised thank you our world needs this needs this we are the two superpowers and together we will achieve more we're at 140,000 right now i'm now going to take it down to the $5,000 level if you can hold up your paddle, and make a $5,000 pledge. Please do so now. 198, thank you. 157, thank you. 144, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that's $155,000. Thank you, thank you. Can I have two more at the $5,000 level? At the $5,000 level right now. 286, thank you. 293, Thank you. That's $165,000. We are so close to our goal. Is there anybody else at the $5,000 level to get me to one seventy-five? dollars We're at one sixty-five right now. At the $5,000 level, just a moment more of your time. Three fifty-nine. dollars Thank you. That's $170,000. Is there one more pledge? Is there one more pledge to get me to 175 right now? Give you a second. I'm now going to take it down to the $2,500 level. If you can hold up your paddle and make a $2,500 pledge, please do so now. We are so close to our goal. 201, thank you. 201, thank you. 304, thank you. 242, thank you. 248, thank you. 304, thank you. Yes! And here's the thing. I know that when you left your homes this evening, you did not anticipate watching a short white guy in a maroon suit do math on stage while standing on a chair. But here we are! And we've raised $182,500 for the China Institute here in its 92nd year. I'm now going to take it down to the $1,000 level. If we get 100%, 225, that's one, thank you. At 1,000, 173, that's two, thank you. 306, that's three, thank you. At the 197, that's four, thank you. 231, that's five, thank you. 227, that's six, thank you. 313, that's seven, thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. That's $189,500. 212. That's 10. Or that's 9. Thank you. And look, you are 292. That's 10. That brings us to $192,500. And here's the thing you are currently sitting through the world's worst magic show. But you are also sitting through one of the world's most important fundraisers. Because we cannot overemphasize 284, 
thank you. That's $293,500. What the China Institute is working toward is a better shared future. And the, the globe will follow. I'm now going to take it to the $500, the $500 level. We are so close to our goal. At 500, we're at 293,500. At the $500 level, at the five, I am going to fall apart. And 362, thank you. 362, thank you. At the $500 level, 305, thank you. One more will get me to 295, 261, thank you. 245, thank you. And here's the thing. With our live auction and with our pledge, we have exceeded our goals. Give yourselves a round of applause. That's a total of $216,000. And this is what I will leave you with. If you were feeling shy or you recently had rotator cuff surgery and you couldn't lift your hand above your eyebrow level, Please do fill out the pledge cards on your table or click the links on your phone from 501 Auctions. One more, 297 with 500 right there. No, what? Sir, 297 with $5,000. And if anybody else would like to jump in with a, any amount above $5,000, do not be shy. Thank you, sir. Th Another 5,000 from three, zero, three. Thank you. <laughs> okay, this never happens like this. You guys are playing hard to get over there. Makes me want that bid more. But I say this with the fullest sincerity as, one more? As someone who just returned. We have to do this together. We have to do it with the China Institute. Stay part of the... The ambassador would like to offer... This is not what anybody was expecting. But the ambassador would like to have a dinner at the consulate if, in, if anybody would bid 10000 for that. Two fifty-seven, right there. Or if anybody would like it for eleven thousand dollars, anybody at eleven? Anybody at eleven? Ladies and gentlemen, what we have just done with all of your support is raised over a quarter million dollars for a better shared future. A thank you to the ambassador. A thank you to Dame Sackler. A thank you to you, Cy. A thank you to all of you for being here tonight. There is a far more elegant presentation yet to come, so please enjoy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Is he not the best ever? CK, the best ever. In a few minutes, he raised a quarter of a million dollars for us. I tell you, I, um, I don't know anyone who can do that. I am, uh, I'm just speechless. No, I'm not speechless. I better be able to speak now. <laughs> okay. Is everybody settled down? Other this, all this excitement? Okay. Well, first time I met Howard Milstein was in 2011. When he came to two thousand eleven, when he came to Beijing to the Mexican Embassy to help me welcome Miss Universe, who was Miss Mexico. But it was a very brief meeting. Then I met Howard again a few years later in two thousand sixteen, when my good friend Christy Ferrar told me that I must seriously meet this amazing, brilliant, and generous man who has just given the prestigious, who was just given the prestigious Marco Polo Award in Beijing. Well, former President Bush was one of the past recipients. 
The award was for his contribution to the exchange of international talents through the Milstein Medical Asian American Partnership Foundation, which helped to develop mutually beneficial partnerships between USA and China. Well, the first impression of Howard is always that he was easy, he was fun, he laughs a hearty laugh, <laughs> and, <laughs> and hugs you, hugs you like, like a big brother. You can't help but love the guy. The other day, I picked up a magazine, and in it was not just one story about him, but three stories about him, and he doesn't even own that magazine. Howard is able to combine business, government, philanthropic, and family resources to create many, many initiatives, some really large-scale, billion-dollar companies. What he has accomplished as the head of a third-generation empire is simply awesome. How awesome? Let's see a video. <laughs> I first came to China in 1980 with my wife, and we knew then in 1980 that it would rejoin uh, the world of nations uh, as a leader, which it has done. When it comes to China, a lot of people sit there and they say, well, maybe we should do this about that, maybe we should do that with China. How it doesn't think about it, he does. I think a good example of the work he's done over Okay, don't you think he's a pretty cool guy? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, a little bit more about him. In 1980, Howard did go to China, as you saw, for the first time, but it was on his honeymoon. He fell in love with China, but according to Charlie, who works with him on China, he 
totally fell in love with not only China, but Peking duck. <laughs> he ate it at every meal. And he even learned to carve the duck. That's amazing, right? His Chinese, do you know he can speak Chinese? He, he, can, he can show off later. His Chinese name is Mi Hao Wen. Many friends in China call him Lao Mi. <laughs> And I also know that he is a very big student of Chinese history. Uh, Charlie and Michelle, who are Chinese, tells, tell me that his brilliant mind can retain so much you know, past facts about China, Chinese history. It's just simply amazing. Now, Howard is very successful in business, we all know, but he's also successful in love. He is married to a terrific lady called Abby. Hi, Abby. Wave your hand. Okay, Abby. And she is a lawyer and a great philanthropist on her own. I read the funny anecdotes about how Howard persisted in courting Ali Abby at Harvard Law School. He's a man who won't take no for an answer. We are doubly thrilled that he had said yes to come tonight. Howard, please come on stage now. Now. Oh. <laughs> Howard, I am going to, uh, now I'm going to give you a surprise. I would like to now play a video for you. It is someone, someone who adores you, who wants to say hello and congratulations. Thank Can we? Can I ask for the light to turn up, please? Can somebody turn on the lights, please? All the lights, please? Okay. Um, 
actually, Howard, our congresswoman, she's also your congresswoman and my congresswoman, she actually did more than that. She has just flown an American flag over the Capitol for you on this occasion. So he ha she has given me a certificate. A certificate. May I just read it? Okay. Right, so everybody can see here. At the request of the Honorable Carolyn Maloney, member of Congress, this flag was flown in honor of Howard Milstein, a renowned businessman and philanthropist whose long-term work and partnerships with China have greatly contributed to world peace and prosperity. This is the certificate. And can I show people the gift? This is the flag. You have to help me. Now, which way is the right way? Well deserved. Let's, uh, let's hear from Howard. Oh, oh wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I'm supposed to give you, I'm supposed to give you this too. Okay. Oh, you want to take a picture. Okay. Uh, I'm going to take your flag, okay? You can take everything. I'm going to take the <laughs> certification. I give it to Abby. Well, you all just saw why I'm here tonight. You Sai asked me, and no one can say no to you Sai. <laughs> I want to thank you Sai for everything that she's done for uh, Chinese American relations. I want I want to thank her for the role, the indispensable role that she plays at the China Institute. I feel humbled by your glowing introduction, Yusai, and deeply honored that you invited me to accept this Blue Cloud Award from the China Institute. The Institute is the oldest U.S. nonprofit whose mission is to promote deeper understanding with China. I want to acknowledge my fellow honorees, Liu Dan, John Long, and Joel Sackler. So we've been talking about the Blue Cloud Award and what is a blue cloud? I've learned that the ancient Chinese appeared to view the sky as a whole. That is, blue cloud means blue sky with white clouds, with some clouds. And we also know that clouds are kind of a symbol of good fortune and luck. But above the clouds is, are the heavens. So if you, you put the clouds in the heavens, you've got even better luck. Uh, so as such, uh, the ancients were looking at the whole rather than the parts, thus blue cloud. And that's a good example of the cultural difference, one that might be misunderstood if left unexplained. It illustrates the import of the Institute's work in bridging cultures. I salute the Institute for its efforts to do so through art, education, conferences, and so much more. Nearly eight years ago, I realized, as the Congresswoman said, and has been said a number of times today, that the bilateral relation between the United States and China would be the most important relationship in the 21st century. As such, I considered that people in a position to help foster that should make every effort to do so. And I personally adopted this cause. Naturally, my first stop was the China Institute and your world-renowned scholar, Ben Wang. I studied history and culture with Ben and gave, he's the one who gave me my Chinese name, Mi Hao Wen. When Chinese people hear my name, they tell me it's a very good name. No doubt that's because it reflects Ben's own fine qualities, qualities that I aspire to. In the Chinese language, there are six kinds of rice. Mi rice is the best rice because it's ready to be cooked. Of course, there's the rice that's planted, the rice that's growing, and in some people's minds, a candidate for best rice is cooked rice, but cooked rice spoils. The, the rice that's ready to be cooked doesn't spoil. Uh, Hao means luminescent like the moon, and it stands for insight and uh, intelligence. 
and when is culture. So you can see why people who know China well will, will say those are good qualities. As you've heard, uh, my family's connection with chi to China began uh, with my trip in 1980, but carried on by 1983 with my father's visit at the request of the Chinese government uh, to help the Chinese government grow bananas. So why would the, in the world would the Chinese government call Paul Milstein from New York for help in growing bananas? Well, at the time, we ran a company called Chiquita Bananas. And so uh, my father was known for that. And of course, he was uh, even more gregarious than I am, and uh, he loved traveling, and so he immediately left for Beijing. Uh, and in those days, of course, he landed in Hong Kong, which was separate. And then he was picked up by the Chinese government, taken to Beijing, where he was put up in the German embassy. My father was a little confused about that. He said, well, you know, why am I in the German embassy? He said, oh, well, that's where we have our best chef. So anyway, he was at the German embassy. But the bananas you see growing in the south today and on Hainan Island all came from that visit. So it goes back a long way. Uh, our businesses today are very different, including the design of golf courses with my partner Jack Nicholas that was mentioned earlier, uh, building a private bank with the Liu family in Hangzhou, uh, back office support for insurance firms and other things. At the same time, like the Chinese, we never forget the importance of giving back to society that makes our success possible. We help those less fortunate and dedicate ourselves to ameliorating the human condition through medical research. In the words of the great Western leader Winston Churchill, a man earns a living by what he gets. He makes a life by what he gives. In Confucianism, the central concepts are Ren and Yi, right action coming from a benevolent heart, guided by Shu, the reciprocity between oneself and others. Of the various forms of Shi giving, my family connects most closely through teaching education, Shi Jiao, and giving medicine, Shi Yi. That's why we set up the Milstein Medical Asian American Partnership Foundation. Through MAP, as we call it, we hope to advance world health and improve U.S.-China relations through working together in medical research that benefits everyone. Like the China Institute, I also believe in studying history and culture to help Americans and Chinese better understand each other. To this end, I've started a program to translate the two great uh, Chinese encyclopedias of the Ming Dynasty and the Qing Dynasty. And in this way, uh, we can find out what, our common, uh, what we have in common. Uh, and this is very important because, particularly in the United States, there's a sense that, well, it's an Eastern culture. It's not uh, something we can really relate to or understand. That's not true at all. And I found in my studies that there are many surprising similarities. And so uh, this is an opportunity to translate these great uh, works. The uh, first one had 22,000 volumes, of which 700 exist in China, uh, well, 700 exist in the world today, which 500 are in China. The other 300 are at places like Cambridge and Harvard and Cornell. And so uh, what we're trying to arrange is for these works to be translated from classical Mandarin to modern Mandarin at the prestigious institutions in China, and then be translated from modern Ch uh, Chinese to colloquial English uh, by these other great international universities, thus making this work accessible in a way that shows the commonalities, but also brings the great Chinese institutions together with great Western institutions. So in the future, may our two cultures grow ever closer so that we can benefit from each other's wisdom and build bridges of understanding. And as we say in my own home, May the China Institute go from strength to strength. Shesha, thank you for this very great honor. Thank you, Howard. I had no idea that you had such a close uh, relationship with China and China Institute. That's 
absolutely fantastic. And uh, but uh, so obviously you are very, very, very deserving of this award. Now, I must say it's my great pleasure to uh, to introduce to you the new uh, Consul General from China, from China to New York, uh, Ambassador Huang Ping. Uh, so, uh, <clears throat> and it's, we used to have, we had the, his predecessor used to come all the time and now we hope that, that this will set a new precedent that he, we will always have the, uh, the Consul General at our events. Ambassador? Who, by the way, was my dinner companion. We have a wonderful time. Thank you. Thank you very much. I uh, didn't expect uh, that I could join you tonight. And uh, I didn't even expect that I would come to New York. Uh, two months ago. When I was uh, taking pictures on the wild plain of a country called Zimbabwe, I was there as an ambassador. Uh, I was there taking pictures of the elephants, rhinos, the beautiful sceneries, and everything there. I got a phone call. Someone from Beijing said, you need to come back. I say, what? I haven't finished my term yet. He said, no, you are going to New York. I say, why you send me to the States again? Especially at this time. I served in the States twice already. I served in this continent three times already, plus one time in, uh, in Ottawa, in Canada. So this is actually my uh, fourth time to come to this continent, and the third time to come back to the States. I was in Washington from 88 to 90, uh, as a junior visa officer. Uh, in 2008, from 2008-2010, I was a council general in Chicago, and now I'm in New York. I was not, not sure or not expecting that they would send me back again, because in my system, America is a place lots of people want to come. And if you have served twice, it's time you go to somewhere like, you know, some other place like in Zimbabwe. <laughs> so I really didn't expect uh, kind of a coming back and uh, work again. I was not sure that I could do this job uh, in a good way, especially at this time. But I must admit that after this little time since I came in this building and spending this time with you, I've been overwhelmed, overwhelmed by the goodwill and the great efforts, the big contributions you have made to bring these two great countries, my country, the People's Republic of China and the United States of America together in all these years. In my table, I met someone, new friend, who told me he went to China, has been to China 120 times. 120 times. How many mileage have you got? <laughs> I don't know. And uh, by listening to all those speeches, even the auction, I could feel the passion. I could feel the goodwill people sitting here in this room devoting themselves to the friendship of bringing people from both sides of the Pacific together. So I will stay as this Council General joining you 
to do this great job. I will feel proud of this new appointment and be part of this team to continue or to add my efforts to the great efforts you have donated here. Ladies and gentlemen, China and the United States, we are great countries. We must work together. 30 years ago, I came here. I've witnessed, since I came here, I've witnessed the change. I've witnessed the growth of this good friendship. Although we are different in many ways, but I believe staying together and work together will not only bringing the great benefits to benefit the people of our two countries, but to help maintain the world peace and the prosperity. We are expecting good results from the uh, meeting in Argentina between President Xi and the President Trump. Both leaders, I hope, they will guide the future development of the friendship of these two countries. And uh, next year is going to be the 40th anniversary. Uh, we established the, the uh, diplomatic relations. This good friendship cannot continue without the joint efforts of our two people. So please accept me as a member of this great team and we will work together to make this relationship and the friendship grow. I thank you. Thank you so much. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much, Ambassador Huang. Um, I just wanted to say one thing. A relationship is based on two partners, and we're so honored and pleased to have the remarks from Ambassador Huang. At the same time, I promised China Institute's good friend, the Manhattan Borough President, Gail Brewer, that I would read the proclamation that was delivered on, by her on behalf of the city of New York. Before I read it, I want to say something of which I'm very, very proud. China Institute is the only organization I know that enjoys support from both sides in such a profound and visible way. We're building out 50,000 square feet of China Institute, reinvigorating the Lower Manhattan community. We've enjoyed support not only from the US and from, chi and from China. It's a place where both sides can come together and collaborate on the things that unite us and bring us together, which is so important. So I promised our friends, and by the way, I can share one thing. Um, the city of New York contributed over $2 million to helping China Institute in its capital campaign to grow out building space. And I'll just briefly read to you what the city says. For over 90 years, China Institute has brought the subtle complexity and richness of China's culture to the community, our community, through education, public programs, and forums, connecting people with influences in the realms of business, art, film, history, and more. Through its events and panels, the China Institute forges connections between China and the United States, tackling and providing strategies to combat issues such as pollution, creating opportunities for a greener economy, and simultaneously profitable businesses. The China Institute offers a variety of programs which focus on art, music, poetry, and other cultural aspects of China, as well as raising awareness for poverty and poverty relief, technology, feminism, among so many others. I, Gail Brewer, do hereby commend the China Institute for its contributions to my city, the city of New York, and hereby proclaim Wednesday, November 28th, China Institute Appreciation Day in the borough of Manhattan in the city of New York. So, thank you. We really do need both sides. Thank you, Andrea. All right. 
So my little fox joke before, if we could keep that in the room, I don't want to get sent to Zimbabwe like the ambassador did. Personal joke. Okay, so we're going to get on with the raffle. By the way, before I talk about the raffle, we have an amazing performance coming up with these world champion um, ballroom dancers. But right now, I'd like to welcome to the stage a dynamic powerhouse, a longtime giant in the world of publishing, entertainment, and yes, in the world of sex as well. I thought the room would get quiet with that. We're talking about Dr. Ruth Westheimer, who many agree is a national treasure who's taught us so much over the years. And joining her is, of course, our venerated Yusai Khan. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Uh, you know, we do have a raffle, but this raffle is, doesn't cost you anything. And we have all together five things. And uh, two things from Tiffany, one thing from, two things from Harmon Cardin, and the last thing is a trip, a business class trip to go to, uh, to go on China Southern Airline, to go to China, a free business class ticket, $6,500. So these are all free. <laughs> and I'm gonna ask uh, Ruth to please help me draw the, uh, so somebody can give me the raffles. Are we here? I'm gonna turn. So you're gonna choose a card, choose four cards. Four. Yes. Say anything about it includes? Uh, there are four. Well, I, this is, I need a bar mitzvah box. <laughs> stand, to stand on. You Can we have a box? No, it's okay. Uh, you have to say that all of these people here who contributed wonderfully yes. for the Institute, and that maybe next year we are going to do even better. Yes. yes. One. Rockefeller Capital Management, Jimmy Chang. Who's Jimmy Chang? Okay, they, they will bring you your gift, okay? Jimmy Chang, you have to wave your hand, or else they don't know where you are. Where are you? No, not here? Not here? Put it away. Okay, if you're not here, oh, oh Jimmy Chang is here. Well, they'll bring the gift to you, okay? Focus, wait, focus, focus, one more. Oh, most focus. Oh, uh, Mitch Ma ja 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 Russo. <laughs> Who's that? Okay, great. You got the second one, Ankin. The third one is, oh, wow. Mino Zhu. Mino Zhu. Who is Mino Zhu? Nobody? Nobody is Mino Zhu? We're going to choose another. Here? Okay, but then you better come over now. One more. One more. Brev Ruben. Brev Ruben. Get Jamdale. Okay, great. We have four winners. Okay, would you please just give to all of okay, them? Sure. Okay, they're coming. Yeah. Okay, we're done. We're done. It's done? You're done. Uh, tell everybody to come back next year. Uh, everybody come back next year. Right. <laughs> okay, I'm going to ask Mr. Hao Ming to come up now. He is the manager of South, the China Southern Airline, and you're giving us a business class ticket for free, and I am so, we are really grateful for you. Thank you. Pretty handsome, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I want you to choose one from all this. This is a magic box. Okay, here you go. Okay. Two. You have two. Two. Sorry, sorry. Another time, okay? <laughs> oh, I know what that is. Yang Zhou, Yang Zhou, CEO of. Zhao Yong. Zhao Yong. Zhao Yong. Zhao Yong. Zhao Yong. Where is Zhao Yong? Okay, great. You go to him, he's going to give you a ticket. Great. Ticket. Okay, good, 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 good. 
you're going to give a, give a ticket to Zhao Yong. He has a wonderful business, amazing business. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, great. Uh, are we, did you get your gifts? Oh, no gifts? What about the other gifts? Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. All right, moving on to one of the final things tonight. Shh. Now, you've heard from Mr. Milstein to Don Sackler, you've heard about the importance of bringing people together. And the, one of the things the China Institute really focuses on for this event are the performances. And if you notice, for instance, when it comes to music, it's very easy to choose things with lyrics, to be told how somebody's supposed to feel, to evoke emotion. The extra challenge for China Institute is to choose things without verbal cues. That's why we saw the beautiful performance uh, from the Bard performers. And right now, there's another performance to follow up in that vein. And that is from the current US professional ballroom champions, Victor Fung and Anastasia Morayova. Please welcome them to the dance floor.
Wow. Thank you so much. I, I, I must say, I've always, I've always loved, I've always loved dance, and uh, so I thought it was really great. And I, I have to thank uh, Sophia for arranging this, uh, Sophia Sheng uh, for arranging this. It's, it's a great, uh, great addition, I think, to our, to our gala. And I, by the way, I also want to thank uh, the ambassador for his generous gift of the dinner. I, I have, have, having had dinner several times uh, with the consul general, previous consul generals, I could say that whoever got that, I don't know who got that dinner, is in for a real treat. Now, I'd like to introduce uh, our last honoree, who unfortunately cannot be here tonight. Uh, Liu Dan actually is a good friend of mine, and um, I met him, thanks to my wife, what, 25 years ago, when he was living in New York. And uh, in fact, I had dinner with him last week in Beijing. I had dinner with him a month ago in Beijing, and uh, we had a big dinner for him here in New York as well. Unfortunately, he had other obligations, so he couldn't be here tonight. Um, I had the pleasure also of working with him uh, when we did the Chinese Embassy in Washington, uh, Liu Dan did an art installation in the building uh, at that, for that project. So um, I must say he's been somebody that's been a really good friend of me and my family for the longest time. To call Liu Dan an artist is too simple. Liu Dan is an interpreter, a visionary, a cultural ambassador and a lens through which the new China meets one of tradition and history. While he cannot physically be here tonight, China Institute honored Liu Dan in a dinner in September, and we are lucky that his artwork speaks for itself. The commanding presence of his painting evokes not just emotion, but thought, a consideration of a landscape as a metaphor for where China is and where it is going. He paints what he calls uncertain subjects. Though they depict pictorial scenery, flora, cypress trees in the Forbidden City, and, and Guangxi, odd stones, all symbols of traditional art. Liu Dan's techniques, however, is purely his, and that is what makes him one of great, China's greatest living artists. Public works Public collections with his works include the British Museum in London, the Musée Guimet in Paris, the Andrew Mellon Collection and the Brooklyn Museum in New York, the Minneapolis Institute of Art, and in a nice overlap of our honorees, the Arthur M. Sackler Museum at Harvard University, Harvard University Art Museums in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Join me in recognizing Liu Dan for his groundbreaking creative, cultural, and contemporary artistic interpretation of Chinese tradition and civilization. Hi, everybody. Um, we're almost at the end of what's been a really fabulous evening. I know, sorry, but we still have more to come. Um, we actually really do. I just wanted at this one time to thank, everybody's been thanked, but I just, there were a few people that haven't been, and I wanted to express my gratitude to some of the internal people. First, to Arthur Chen, our MC, who's helped us out this evening. <laughs> to Andrea San Severino Galan, where is she? Andrea, please come out, Andrea. Andrea and the entire senior development team. Will all the senior people raise their hands? Dinda, Shenzhen, Willow, Michael Buning, Jeremy, Vivian Tao, Willow, all the senior team that makes everything possible. So as a wrap up, um, as a wrap up, we're going to invite our professional dance team out here for one more fabulous swirl around the dance floor. And then after that, 
the real party begins. So after they have their dance performance, everyone's invited on the dance floor to join us when the real party begins. Thank you again. Thank you, Anla. Thank you, Yusai. Thank you, Sophia Didi. Let's have, let's have some fun. <laughs>